For the past 20 years, Ethiopians have relied on the principal port of its neighbor Djibouti for their foreign trade. Ethiopia will be able to once again access the Eritrean ports of Assab and Masala, thanks to the new peace agreement with Eritrea. The nation is also looking into other options, such as Berbera, Port Sudan, and Lamu, in addition to the possibility of developing the southern corridor via Duel to reach Djibouti. With a gross national income of $890 per person, Ethiopia is clearly a low-income country. Now let's look at how Ethiopia and Ethiopians will rise to be a middle-income country by 2030 and some challenges they might face along the way. Ethiopia's economy has had some of the world's quickest growth during the last 15 years. Growth was driven, among other things, by capital accumulation, particularly through investments in public infrastructure. Due to COVID-19, real gross domestic product growth in Ethiopia slowed down in the 2020 fiscal year and more in 2021 fiscal year, with industry and service growth slowing to single digits. The COVID-19 pandemic had little impact on agriculture, where more than 70% of people work, and its contribution to growth slightly increased in the 2020-2021 fiscal year compared to the prior year. Now, let's have a rundown of the 12 points. Number 12. Positive trends in poverty reduction have been observed in both urban and rural areas over the past 10 years as a result of the consistently high economic growth. From 30% in 2011 to 24% in 2016, the percentage of the population living below the federal poverty line declined, and over time, human development indices also increased. Gains, however, are small in comparison to other nations that saw rapid growth, and inequality has grown recently. Based on the 2019 Homegrown Economic Reform Agenda, the government has unveiled a new 10-year development plan that will run until 2030. The goal of the plan is to maintain the impressive growth that was attained under the preceding decade's growth and transformation plans, while easing the transition to a more privately driven economy. Additionally, it intends to boost productivity and competitiveness in important areas that support growth, enhance the business climate, and deal with macroeconomic imbalances. But in order to reach its development goals, Ethiopia must overcome its current challenges. Number 11. The key issues facing Ethiopia are sustaining its good economic growth and speeding the decrease of poverty, both of which call for considerable advancements in job creation and stronger governance to ensure that growth is equal across the society. The government is investing and funding pro-poor programs with a significant portion of its budget. The cost of pro-poor programs will continue to be mostly financed in the short term by large-scale donor contributions. Ethiopia has been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic's enormous social and economic effects, just like the rest of the world. While jobs have been recovering and exports and foreign direct investment have recovered, certain long-lasting scars are probably still present. Urban employment levels haven't entirely recovered. Some households and businesses are still reporting revenue losses and estimates place an increase in poverty. Number 10. Food security is threatened by frequent extreme weather events, long-term effects of climate change, and pastoral livelihoods. The country's southern and eastern regions will be badly affected by the greatest drought in 40 years, which will affect 7 million people. The one and only major factor that has contributed to Ethiopians' famine for the past 50 years is a repressive government that is unconcerned with the needs of its citizens. The Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front did the opposite. Surprisingly, despite its growing authoritarianism, the government's drought relief programs have not yet been jeopardized, and neither have food insecurity and hunger. Examples include the crackdown on the opposition in 2006 and the harsh, security-led response to widespread protests in 2016. The government's relief effort appears to have garnered some grudging acceptance from the populace, but not overwhelming support, which is the other side of the coin. Famine prevention must be a part of a democratic process if it is to become a real social-political contract with the people. That is not taking place. The repressive shift, however, raises concerns due to both its own nature and the possibility that the leadership would back away from its commitment to preventing famine. This commitment is, of course, only as strong as the leadership's historical assessment of the political and national security risks posed by famine. There are no additional assurances. There is a need for vigilance, even though policies that prevent starvation have not yet been abandoned. Number 9. 
Ethiopia has recently been caught up in a political revival enthusiasm and a resurging optimism for its future. Most significantly, a protracted battle has come to an end thanks to the recent peace agreement with Eritrea. Free movement of people and access to Eritrean ports might open up a lot of commercial prospects for both nations. As a result, this is the ideal time to get together and talk about ways to boost the non-farm rural economy of Ethiopia. Creating equitable and sustainable jobs for a population that is expanding at a rate of 2 million new employees per year remains a serious task for the nation. It will take further education and training improvements, continuous legislative and regulatory reforms, particularly in the agriculture sector, as well as increasing efforts to promote innovation to get over structural limitations like land scarcity. Number 8. The government has mostly focused on industrialization as part of its job development plan up to this point. But in order to address the employment crisis and better support sustainable job growth within many of its secondary cities and towns, it must go beyond manufacturing. In order to increase citizen welfare and maintain peace and stability, the government has made permitting sustainable job creation a primary priority. Each year, 2 million Ethiopian adolescents are expected to enter the workforce. Number 7. Ethiopia's aims to become the primary exporter of electricity in East Africa are supported by nearly unequaled hydropower potential. In order to improve energy availability, control costs, and increase electrification rates, urban regions like Addis Ababa stand to benefit the most from this. The main project under construction is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which has a capacity of 6,450 megawatts. Because electricity prices are among the lowest in the world and the lowest in social security association, operating businesses in the nation may operate more cheaply. Given the government's emphasis on creating hydroelectric projects, which typically require little maintenance and have cheap operating expenses, once the initial sunk expenditures have been amortized, this is expected to continue. The expansion of Ethiopia's manufacturing industry will depend heavily on reliable and affordable energy supplies to maintain its cost competitiveness in the region. Nevertheless, due to Ethiopia's substantial reliance on hydropower, changes in rainfall patterns, droughts, and dropping water reservoir levels might affect the country's electricity supply. Additionally, because of the inadequate transmission and distribution infrastructure, businesses frequently experience power outages, necessitating the development of pricey backup power generation facilities to reduce productivity losses. If Ethiopia took advantage of its abundant geothermal, solar, and wind resources, and made significant investments in the domestic grid network, this situation might change. Number 6. Ethiopia lacks the capacity to refine crude oil. Hence, all refined petroleum products must be imported despite the country's small proven oil and gas reserves. Given that 80% of the fuel is domestically produced in Sudan, the price of fuel is quite low on a regional scale. But relying heavily on imports increases the chance of supply chain breakdowns. Because of this, although though Ethiopia offers businesses low fuel costs, there may be fluctuations and the actual cost of fuel may be much greater than the official price shows, especially during times of scarcity. With four oil depots currently under construction or planned across the nation as part of the Depot Construction Master Development Program, Ethiopian Petroleum Supply Enterprise is expanding the network of fuel depots and shipment infrastructure in response to rising fuel consumption and rising fuel supply volatility. These will contribute to boosting the fuel supply and market security locally. Number 5. Ethiopia will gain from many of the planned or recently completed transport infrastructure projects in East Africa by strengthening its supply chains, lowering trading costs, and improving access to international markets. For instance, the 752-kilometer railway that runs between the capital cities of Ethiopia and Djibouti, which was completed in early 2016, has reduced the time it takes to move products from two days to just 10 hours. In order to improve Ethiopia's linkages with Djibouti, land-based transportation infrastructure is also being developed. This includes a new railway that will run from the region of Ethiopia that produces potassium, close to Mekel, to the port of Djibouti, where potash is exported. As part of attempts to strengthen bilateral relations and commercial linkages, progress is also likely to be made on cross-border train and road connections between Ethiopia and Eritrea. A recent feasibility study for a railway connecting Addis Ababa 
and the port of Masala in Eritrea was funded by the Italian government, and other road improvements between the two nations are also being considered. Long-term gains in regional interconnectedness are predicted by the building of the Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor, and more Ethiopian goods will probably travel through Kenya's ports. Ethiopia continues to rely largely on road transportation despite investments in rail transportation. Even though Ethiopia's roads have significantly improved over the past 10 years, and continued investment in transportation infrastructure will reduce the risk of accidents and delays in the medium term, many roads are still unpaved, which lengthens travel times and increases the likelihood of delays. As part of a road expansion and maintenance program suggested by the Addis Ababa City Roads Authority, Numerous road projects are now underway in Addis Ababa. China will continue to actively contribute to the construction of Ethiopia's transportation infrastructure. The new railway line connecting Addis Ababa and Djibouti, as well as the infrastructure at the port of Darala, in which China Merchants Ports Holdings has a 15.7% share, were already funded by China. Number 4. Ethiopia is a landlocked nation that relies heavily on the port of Djibouti for about 95% of its trade because it lacks any seaports, except for the Bardo, which is only passable occasionally depending on water levels, Ethiopia does not have any significant river ports. Due to its proximity to both the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, Djibouti serves as both Ethiopia's primary export and import route and a major commerce hub for the region. Due to its reliance on the port of Djibouti, Ethiopia is currently subject to significant hazards, including delays brought on by traffic and strikes, as well as excessive expenses in customs and trade bureaucracy because of a lack of competition. With intentions to use the port of Sudan, Mombasa port in Kenya, Berbera port in Somaliland, and maybe the port of Masawa in Eritrea if diplomatic relations improve, the nation has taken moves to broaden its options for trade. Major downside risks to the nation's supply chains stem from an over-reliance on the road network for both goods and passengers, as well as years of underinvestment in the nation's transportation infrastructure. Long lead times raise import and export costs, which are greater in Ethiopia than the norm for the region. However, as more rail and road improvements are made throughout Ethiopia and the wider region, connecting major trade routes with special economic zones and important economic hubs, Lead times and prices are projected to be decreased in the medium to long term. Number 3. Ethiopia's economy slowed down from 6.1% growth in 2020 to 5.6% growth in 2021 as a result of the civil war and COVID-19's effects on travel and hospitality. On the supply side, industry and services, as well as private consumption and investment, were the main drivers of growth. Due to domestic credit growth to boost the economy and supply chain disruptions, Brought on by COVID-19, inflation soared to 26.7% in 2021 from 20.4% 20 in 2020, much beyond the central bank's 8% objective. In 2021, the budget deficit, including grants, decreased to 2.6% of GDP from 2.8% in 2020 as a result of reprioritizing expenditures and an increase in tax collections. Although stable, the banking industry is not open to outside competition. State-owned banks account for 51.8% of the banking sector's assets, followed by microfinance 15%, insurance 9%, and leasing 9%, which together make for 76% of the financial sector's total capital. In June 2021, it was predicted that public and publicly guaranteed debt represented 32.8% of GDP and 57.8% of external debt. Due to lower imports, the current account deficit decreased marginally from 4.4% of GDP in 2020 to 4.3% in 2021. Foreign direct investment and remittances pay for the current account deficit. In 2020 and 2021, the amount of foreign reserves needed to cover imports was 2.5 months. The $408 million sales development representative allocation, which was recorded at the central bank and represents 0.4% of GDP, will increase global reserves. The number of individuals in need of humanitarian assistance surged from roughly 8 million in 2020 to close to 15.8 million in 2021 as a result of conflict and the COVID-19 epidemic. Number 2. The GDP is expected to rise at a rate of 5.7% in 2023, 
picking up to 4.8% in 2022 due to industry, private consumption, and investment. The telecom industry's liberalization and a pickup in tourism are anticipated to improve the GDP prospects. COVID-19, debt vulnerabilities, and the civil war in northern Ethiopia are the main threats to the growth prospects. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine is predicted to raise food and oil prices globally, causing inflation to reach 32.6% in 2022, before falling to 24.9% in 2023. Due to the implementation of the fiscal consolidation strategy and improvements in the mobilization of tax income, it is anticipated that the fiscal deficit will be constant at 2.6% in 2022 and 2023. In 2022, the current account deficit is predicted to increase to 4.8% of GDP before declining to 4.1% in 2023. This is due to weaker capital input imports and a gradual rebound in exports of goods and services, as well as foreign direct investment. Number 1. Ethiopia ranks 72 on the Global Conflict Risk Index for 2021. Droughts, flooding, desertification, water scarcity, and a rise in insect activity are some of its climate change vulnerabilities, which have an impact on the agriculture, energy, and health sectors. About 10.2 million people were impacted by the 2016 El Nio-induced drought, which necessitated a $1.9 billion humanitarian response. The Productive Safety Net program covers 8 million to 10 million individuals at a cost of $440 million annually and was implemented in 2005 to lessen susceptibility to climate shocks. For reducing GHG emissions, the 2011 Climate Resilient Green Economy Strategy offers a framework. Ethiopia set emission objectives under three scenarios business as usual, unconditional, and conditional in its update to its nationally determined contribution for 2020 to 2030. According to the latest estimate, emissions will drop from 347.3 million tons of carbon dioxide in 2020 to 100 and 25.8 million tons of carbon dioxide in 2030, a 68.8% decrease. The strategy's implementation would require creative climate finance. Ethiopia's nationally determined contribution requires $316 billion in financing over the period of 2020 to 2030, that's $275.5 billion for mitigation and $40.5 billion for adaptation, $63.2 billion will come from local sources and the remaining amount from international sources of climate finance. Ethiopia is on track to achieve SDG 13 on addressing climate change. The 13th Sustainable Development Goal, one of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals created by the United Nations General Assembly in 2015, SDG 13 or Global Goal 13 is about addressing climate change. Take immediate action to mitigate climate change and its effects. According to the goal's stated mission statement, by 2030, SDG 13's five aims must be accomplished. They discuss a wide range of topics relating to climate change. How put targets are the first three goals. Build knowledge and capacity to deal with climate change. Increase resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related disasters. And incorporate climate change measures into policies and plans. The UN Framework Convention on Climate Change must be implemented and procedures to increase planning and management capacity must be promoted. These two aims are means of attaining targets. There are indicators that go with each target and give a way to evaluate how well each target and SDG 13 as a whole are progressing overall. The principal international intergovernmental venue for discussing the world's response to climate change is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Ethiopia will look a whole lot different come 2030 if all the major problems it faces today are mitigated. We can expect to see sprawling infrastructure, wealth and job creation, zero famine, and enough electric power supply for the entire nation and its East African neighbors. Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you enjoyed it, please remember to leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as part of our online community here on Think Rich Africa. We'll see you in the next video.